In this video, we'll talk about Warburg effect. So Otto Warburg noticed an interesting trend in the cancer cells. So the cancer cells preferentially use glycolysis for their primary source of energy production. Even if oxygen is present, they don't use oxidative phosphorylation for energy generation. Instead, they utilize glycolysis to make several intermediates that can be useful for their growth and survival. So normal cell generally utilize glucose. Glucose gets converted into pyruvate. Pyruvate eventually forms acetyl-CoA which forms the TCA cycle. And after the TCA cycle there would be oxidative phosphorylation which would generate a lot of ATP. That's pretty much normal for a normal cell. Very less lactate is produced though in this particular situation. So oxidative phosphorylation is preferred when there is oxygen. Now in case of cancer cell, glucose gets converted more into lactate. So pyruvate eventually forms the lactate and little, little amount of oxidative phosphorylation happen. This shift in metabolism is quite advantageous to cancer cell. Apparently, when we look at the cancer cell, we have to understand the cancer cell needs to divide. Now, divide or dividing cells in general require a lot of energy. But if we think in that term, it's counterintuitive, right? Because cancer cell needs energy. Glycolysis produce less energy uh, compared to oxidative phosphorylation. So how does this thing work? So the energy efficiency terms in term for cancer cell is balanced in a different way. First of all, glycolysis produces only two ATP molecule that is less efficient than oxidative phosphorylation. But in order to optimize, cancer cell upregulates the glucose uptake. So several GLUT1 transporters are upregulated into the cancer cell which brings in more and more glucose ensuring more and more energy can be produced. Biological advantages are plenty. Because the glycolytic intermediates provide the raw materials for making new nucleotides, amino acids and lipids. All these raw materials are required for cell division or making new cells. And that is crucial for a rapidly proliferating cell like the cancer cell. Now, the lactate that is produced in this glycolytic events, eventually that is produced after these glycolytic events, would actually drop down the pH of the environment. That helps the tumor cells to evade the body's own immune system. So that is how it is super beneficial for the cancer cells. So not only it is beneficial in terms of getting intermediates, it's also beneficial to evade the immune system. So the principle behind the Warburg effect is actually used to image cancer progression in the body. So PET scan actually works on this principle. So 18F uh, fluorodeoxyglucose is used as a, a tracer. So FDG PET imaging is based on the principle that cancer cells uptake a lot of glucose and this labeled glucose can be monitored in these uh, imaging systems. So here you can see a tumor tissue would uptake a lot of glucose. Don't forget about that blotch that is brain. So brain takes up a lot of glucose that's why you see a blotch around the brain region. But here near the breast region you can see a tumor where it is not expected to be that dark. So this is a clear sign of a tumor and the key principle based on this imaging is basically Warburg effect. So it has several clinical implication. Given that, that uh, cancer cells prefer glycolysis, several uh, particular inhibitors which block the glycolytic enzyme such as hexokinase inhibitors could be a good can cancer therapeutic. Now so what we learned, we learned that cancer cell has a weird uh, sort of trend to use glycolysis as a key energy uh, producing pr procedure instead of oxidative phosphorylation. So it always prefers aerobic glycolysis and this is kind of like a metabolic reprogramming and glucose uptake by the cancer cell is exploited by using a tracer to detect cancer in the body of the patient. This is the fundamental principle of PET. And finally, we looked at how glycolytic enzymes can be targeted to target cancer cell. So they, it has a lot of therapeutic potential. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook and Instagram page. You can support our channel using Super Thanks. See you in the next video.